persecution of Christians has reached historic levels, with millions worldwide living in fear and suffering for following Jesus Christ. Some estimates indicate that 350 million believers are facing torture, imprisonment, oppression, discrimination, and death. Horrifying statistics reveal that every five minutes, a Christian dies for his or her faith. Pastor Benny Hinn's heart has been broken as he's seen the news stories and heard reports from those who are enduring persecution. And he is asking you to join him now in fervent prayer for those who are facing unspeakable consequences as they stand strong for their beliefs. We must not forget them. Go to the ministry website at www.bennyhinn.org and sign up to join prayer warriors around the globe in praying for persecuted Christians. The prayer of agreement is a powerful spiritual force for effecting change in the natural world. So join this global initiative to intercede for persecuted Christians today. Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. A powerful word today from Pastor Shane Perry. You're going to love it. He's a wonderful pastor I met just recently in Florida. I was so impressed by him and the anointing on his life that I asked him to come and be with me on This Is Your Day. So today you're going to hear him by himself ministering the word because I want to see God bless you. You know, when you find someone like a Perry, like a Shane Perry with the anointing on them, you think, oh God, you know, people need to hear such a man. I've had others do this where they, they ministered to you and God blessed you and you, the response was fantastic from you. So here's my dear friend, new friend, and for a long time he'll be my friend. Pastor Shane Perry, and I pray that the anointing on him will be released on you and God will bless you like he's blessed him. Here he is. Thank you, Pastor Benny. I appreciate this opportunity. Let me tell you guys something. If you have uh, an opportunity to see yesterday's program, you're going to see the impact that Pastor Benny's had on my life. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to stand here today. In fact, this is a part of a dream that God had placed in my heart to one day just to be able to meet Pastor Benny, let alone be on this show. What an incredible man of God who has reached the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has consistently touched lives over and over and over again. I'm just so blessed to be a part of the program today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a word that I believe is going to bless your life. I want you, if you will, quickly to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm a 21st century preacher, so I'm preaching from my phone here. Uh, it says in verse 6, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man, uh, uh, his soul was grieved, every man for his sons, for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Verse 7, And David said to Abathar the priest, Emelimelech's son, I pray that you bring hither the ephod. He wanted to pray. And Abathar brought it. And David prayed. He inquired the Lord, and he said something very significant. I want you to catch this. He said, Shall I pursue? After this troop shall I overtake them. And the Lord answered and said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and thou wilt recover without fail. I want to talk to you today from the thought, if you will, rapid recovery. I believe that we're in a season right now where God is getting ready to send rapid release in our life. That there are some things that you've been dealing with in this these past few years, these past few seasons, and God is saying, now is the time that I want to send change into your life. I believe that God is a now God. In fact, faith, the whole concept is centered around now. If you look at Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God wants to do some things for you now. God wants to release some things in your life now. I believe that God has blessed us to partner and be connected with such a great ministry as Pastor Benny Hinn and such a great man of God because there is a release that's coming through this television program, coming through this ministry that's going to send breakthrough in your life. Not tomorrow, not months or weeks from now, but right now, God wants to do something in your life. You know, the psalmist said in Psalms 118 and 25, save now, O Lord, I beseech thee. I beseech thee, O Lord, send now 
prosperity. I believe this is the season that not, that not only God wants to bless your family, wants to heal your body, wants to change things in your life, but I believe that God wants to bless you financially, and I believe that he wants to do it now, right now. In fact, that verse, and we'll get back to the text in just a moment, but that verse is interesting because if you read it in the original Hebrew, it actually says, come on now, Lord, meaning that David came to a place where he said, Lord, it's about that time. I've come to a spot where I've released my faith. I've exercised all that I can to get this breakthrough in my life, and I need you to do something for me now. As I'm speaking to this uh, a crowd of millions around the world, all of the precious partners, all that have partnered with this incredible ministry, you're saying, Pastor Shane, I need a change in my life now. And I want to talk to you about that today. I, I, uh, I have four kids. And they're all, it ranges from ages seven, twin daughters that are five, son that are seven, and I have a seven-month-year-old child, another boy. And so I am an aficionado as it relates to children's movies, children's television programs. I know about them all. And one of my favorites is a show called Megamind. And in this movie, uh, there's a, a part in the movie where the man talks about, Megamind talks about how he wished he had a button that he could push that would reset time. But he says it, it's impossible. And I thought to myself, what if there was a button we could push that could change everything in our past? And I saw myself, my hand hovering over this button, uh, uh, theoretically, and maybe you could see that too. And I thought to myself, if I had the opportunity to push a button to erase everything that I've ever been through, I wouldn't push it. And the reason why I wouldn't push this button is simple because I understand that everything that I've been through in my past has led me to where I am now. In fact, Romans 8 and 28 said that all things work together for the good to them that love God, that are called according to his purpose, which means everything that you've been through in your life has led you to this place where you are today. You're standing on the precipice of the greatest breakthrough in your life. And God says, as you begin to really partner with this program, as you begin to uh, connect with this wonderful television program, this wonderful ministry, God says, I'm getting ready to release some things in your life right now. And everything you've been through in the past, I'm going to use it to bless you in your present and take you into your future. Now, David here is in an interesting situation. And the situation is this. He has come to live with the Philistines. He's living with the enemy, if you will. And I asked myself, I said, now what put David in this position? Why would David be living with the arch enemy of Israel? Well, if you know the history, David is running from Saul. Saul has come against him. David has the anointing. David has the gift. But yet Saul is after him. And I've learned something, y'all. You can't run from your problems. You got to be strong enough to face the facts and believe God for a change in your life. And the Bible says that now he's living in a place called Ziglag. And he's there because he has gone back to the place of his greatest victory. You know, uh, uh, there's several different theories. Now, sometimes I like to read scientific things and see how God has revealed to man the mysteries of the earth. And Isaac Newton is, is very interesting to me. You know, he had some laws. The first law of motion, every, uh, uh, every object in motion will remain in motion at constant velocity until acted upon by an outside force. He had another law called the law of the pendulum. And in this law, he states that when an object is released, it cannot return or it is impossible for it to return back to its original position. One of my daughters, she loves to swing, so I decided to test this theory. I took my daughter, I put her on the swing, I held her against my face. Now, the theory is that if I release her, then she won't hit me from where I held her. So I pulled her back as far as I could. I released her, and when I did release her, she uh, uh, launched out. When she came back, she stopped an inch in front of my face. Now, not only was this interesting from a scientific perspective, but it's also amazing from a spiritual perspective because every time she went out, she was further away from coming. And God spoke to me and he said, just like this law of motion, David thought he could go back to the place of his last victory. But the truth is you can never go back because God only gives you enough momentum to launch out 
into what he's called you to do. He never gives you enough to go back to your original position. And some of you are saying today, here I am. I'm standing in faith. I'm believing God for something in my life. I'm ready for change to take place, but I'm so scared because it's not working. Let me tell you something. The devil only attacks what God is about to release. And so you're out here and you're saying, I've, I've stepped out on faith, but I'm thinking about going back. Never go back. In fact, today, as you prepare yourself to partner on a deeper level with this ministry, I want you to know every seed that you sow into Benny Hinn Ministries, into This Is Your Day, every seed that you sow is going to propel you further into your future. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of always going back. I'm ready for God to release some things in my right now, and I'm ready to move forward into what God has for me. Now, here is David. He's living with the Philistines. He's down in Ziglag, and the Bible says that the day comes where uh, the Philistines are going to fight against Israel. David joins up with the king, and when he gets there, the captains of the host say, we don't trust David. We believe that if we take him to battle with us, that he will turn on us. So they send him back to Ziglag. When he goes back to Ziglag, the Bible says that he finds it burned with fire, that all the women have been taken, that all of the money is gone, that all of the children are gone. He's lost everything. Not only that, David's own men talk about stoning him. Now, I'm a little different kind of pastor. I pastor Innovation Church in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and we try to do things a little bit different. I really go after the loss, and that's why I love this ministry. That's why I love Pastor Benny, because he believes in winning souls to Jesus Christ around the world. He's had global impact. I'm standing here today, and I have learned how to connect with God on a deeper level because Pastor Benny, through his book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, was the first person to teach me how to really seek God for the anointing. And so as I have begun to seek God for the anointing, I have had uh, of this burning desire to reach the lost. And every time you sow a seed into this ministry, that's what you do. You give us the ability right here. You give Pastor Benny and this wonderful ministry team the ability to reach the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the method of television. But here is David, and he had connected with men that had a past. The Bible says that many of them were wanted. They had warrants out for their arrest. They were all indebted. They were struggling, and they had united with David. I was doing a community event recently, and I told my wife, I said, they may never let me speak again because when I walked into the service to speak, I said that the problem is what we always talk about. The problem is the community. What do you mean, Pastor Shane? When we say community as a church, we're talking about the church community. But when I say community, I'm talking about the unlost or, or the unchurched or the lost. And so when I got up, I said, I have a problem with this church or this environment or where we are. Because when I walked in here, nobody was drunk. Yeah. Nobody smelled like weed. Nobody looked like they had just come from the club. And it bothered me because we said we wanted to reach the community, meaning I don't want a church full of saved people. I want to bring some people to church that need Jesus Christ. But when you do this, you have the problem that David had because it takes time to develop them. So these guys talked about stoning David. Now, I want to let you know something. Whenever you're in a position where trouble comes to your life, what happens is God will sift through the people who have your back and who don't. And when these men talked of stoning David, David went to the place that he always knew to go to. Just like Pastor Benny's been teaching us so powerfully. I mean, he had me weeping in the green room as he was teaching. He had me praying and wanting to connect back to God as he was teaching on prayer. David does the same thing. David grabs the ephod and he goes into prayer and he says, God, what do you want me to do? The Bible says that God told him to pursue that he was going to recover everything that he had lost. David then, now this is interesting, David didn't have a GPS. He didn't have a cell phone. He didn't have an apparatus that could cause him to know where he's supposed to go or, or which way he's supposed to be, but, but he had a word from the Lord. And I want to share with you, as you're watching me, by way of internet or television or however this is coming to you around the world, I want to share with you and let you know that God will give you a vision for your future. He'll reveal it to you in prayer, but he won't tell you how to get there. If he told you how to get there, you would never do it because of what you have to go through to get the blessing. But the Bible says that David just started walking. 
And that's what you have to do when you have faith. That's what you have to do when you partner with a ministry. You have to know that when you sow seeds into ministry, when you do the work of the Lord, when you help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, what you're actually doing is, is you're taking steps of faith. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how it's coming, but I know that I'm about to have a rapid release right now. Now watch this. He starts walking with his men and he sees something interesting. An Egyptian man, now I want y'all to catch this now, there's an Egyptian man who is half dead. He's hungry, he's sick, and he's limping through the desert. And I have learned in my experience that whenever God wants to bless your life, it never looks pretty when it first starts. Oh, it's usually wounded and limping along and barely making it. But God is saying, I'm going to take the ugliest situation in your life and I'm going to cause it to bless you. Can I pause there for a moment? Rachel was beautiful. She was so beautiful that when Jacob saw her, he lifted up his voice and he wept. Now, you know a woman is beautiful when she can make you cry. He went and he rolled the stone away and he watered her flocks. Do you know she had to be beautiful for a man that doesn't have a job to go to work for? But she had a sister by the name of Leah. Leah, I'm just going to be real, was ugly. Oh, she was unattractive. How do I know? Her name in the original Hebrew means long-legged gazelle, but it also means wild cow, which means when her father named her at her birth, he said, mm, she looks like a wild cow. She was unattractive. She was unwanted. But there was something different between Rachel and Leah. Rachel was beautiful, but she couldn't produce. And sometimes things look good, but they're not designed to bless your life. But this woman that was unwanted, that was unattractive, The Bible says that when he saw that she was hated, he opened up her womb. Some of you, you're dealing with difficult situations in your life. You're being hated on. Your vision looks like it's struggling. You're fighting with this situation in your life. But God says, I'm about to open up your spiritual womb and cause you to produce blessings in your life. Great things are about to take place in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that as this woman was hated, that God opened up a womb. She had four children in rapid succession. The first son that she had, she called his name Reuben. Reuben in the Hebrew is C, comma, a son, exclamation point. Now will my husband love me because I gave him a son, but it didn't work. Second son that she had, she called his name Simon. The Lord hath heard that I was hated. Now will, the, will my husband love me? Didn't work. Third son that she had, she called him Levi. It means to be joined. She said, now will my husband be joined unto me? Didn't work. Last son that she had, she called him Judah. And she said, I'm going to give God the praise for myself. I come to decree and declare today that you're watching me and you've been trying to please everybody else. You've been trying to work things out for yourself. But God says, I'm about to bless you and I'm about to give you what you desire today. Right now, rapid release is coming to your life. Now watch this. There's an ugly situation. There's an Egyptian limping through the wilderness, but God uses him. When he comes to David, he reveals where David is supposed to go. They go down to the camp And they find them celebrating, partying with their stuff. Now, the Bible says that when the thief is caught, he must repay seven times. I want to release something to you right now. As you prepare to sow into this ministry, as you prepare to become a deeper partner with this ministry, I want to tell you that this is the season that God's going to take everything that the enemy has stolen from you and he's going to bring it back to you sevenfold in the name of Jesus. Seven times greater is being released in your life. I want you to say it with me. Point your hand to that television screen. Point it to that internet feed, however way you're watching me. And I want you to decree and declare that right now, everything the devil has stolen from you, you're going to get it back and you're going to get it back with interest in the name of Jesus. Let me say this to you. There's a reason why giving is so powerful. Giving paralyzes the enemy. What do you mean? I did a little study on on snake charmers, and I discovered that a snake charmer, uh, he plays his flute, and it appears that the snake is mesmerized by the music, but a cobra is tone deaf, which means the cobra can't hear the music. But the trick is, is that the snake charmer taps his foot, and when he taps his foot, the snake 
there's an electromagnetic impulse that goes through the cobra's body and it paralyzes him. And then the snake has to mimic the movements of the snake charmer. And this is what happens when you give into the work of the Lord. This is what happens when you sow into ministries like this ministry that, that reaches the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what happens. You literally paralyze the enemy. The Bible says that we bind him. Bind means to encapsulate by the spine. So every time you give, you bind the spirit of poverty in your life. You bind the spirit of lack in your life. And I come to decree and declare that God's about to give you rapid release in your finances, in your home, in your family, in your body right now in Jesus name so now we have David and he waits until it's dark and when it gets dark David waits till they get drunk they're partying with this stuff and they attack them and when they attack them they fight them all night long and at the end of the battle they recover everything some of you are going to go into spiritual warfare but I want to tell you in 24 hours there's a release coming I know you've been crying, but Psalms 30 and 5 said his anger endureth but for a moment in his favor's life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Whatever you're dealing with right now, you've got 24 hours to cry about it because joy is about to show up. Release is about to show up. Breakthrough is about to show up. Psalms 126 and 3 said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. We're about to sow into the work of the ministry, and you may be crying when you're giving, but get ready because you're about to bring joy because you're going to have the harvest with you. I believe this is the season of harvest for your life. This is the time for rapid release. I want you to prepare yourself. Just like David, they recovered all. And I want to tell you today, you're about to recover everything and it's coming to you right now in Jesus' name. Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think, according to the power that works in you. Now unto him. God is saying, I want to do something in your life right now. I want to send rapid release right now. Let's get real for a moment. You are worried about some financial situation, the weight of it, the pressure of it. The first thing you have to do is you've got to release it to God. And whenever you release it to God, he's going to rapid release the blessing into your life. This is what I want you to do. There's going to be a phone number on that screen. I want you to call that number. And I want you to begin to believe God for an incredible miracle in your life. As I was here on the set, I started asking God, what should I challenge these wonderful partners with? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, challenge them with the seed that changed your life. I want you to go to that phone and get ready to sow this seed because God's about to have a, bring rapid release in your finances, rapid release in your family, rapid release in your life. I was challenged by God to sow a $500 seed. When he challenged me to do it, I didn't have it. And he challenged me on multiple occasions. $500 seed, $500 seed, $500 seed. The first time he told me to sow it, he said, I want you to sow it into the building fund of the church. And when you do and you build God's house, I'm going to build your house. Well, I don't want to brag. This has been some years ago, but I started consistently sowing $500 in. And I mean, it wasn't like I had it like that back then, but I kept sowing the seed because I wanted my own stuff. I went from living in an apartment, actually being homeless at one moment, to moving into a multi-million dollar home free and clear. It was given to me. Because of my seed. Your seed will create a harvest that you don't have to labor for. Your seed is that powerful. As you go to that phone right now, as you go to that, that internet uh, uh, place and you click on that credit card icon, I want you to go with the mindset that I'm going to sow what the preacher sold because there's some things about to be released in my life. I want you to get a $500 seed and I want you to call that number. When you do, you're going to see some things happen in your life. One, you're going to see a rapid release in your house. Some of you are going to pay your house off. Some of you, you've been behind on your house for so long, you're going to save it. You're going to recover all. Not only that, you're going to recover the one you're in, and you're going to get one seven times greater according to the scriptures. I want you to get that seed in your hand. There's going to be a rapid release of finances in your life. God told me to start sowing into a pastor $500 every week I sowed it, and I needed it. God said, if you sow into him, I'm going to sow back into you. When I did it, my ministry exploded around the world. I preached in front of 50,000 people because of a seed that I sowed, and it changed my finances for the rest of my life. God wants to send rapid release into your life. He wants to send rapid financial breakthrough. I want you to go to that phone. 
I want you to log on to that secured website, and I want you to sow that seed of $500. I'm telling you, there's a change coming in your house. There's a change coming in your living situation. There's a change coming in your financial situation. God wants to send abundance into your life. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 22 that the blessing, Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, addeth no sorrow with it. God wants to bless you with no worries, no concerns, but you have to be willing to sow that seed. Go to that phone, sow that seed of $500. What am I sowing it into? I'm sowing it into this ministry, but I'm also sowing it into my release that's coming right now. As you sow that seed of $500, I want you to decree and declare that I am receiving my breakthrough right now. Dead is being canceled right now. Sickness is leaving my body right now. As I sow this $500 seed, change is coming in my life. My mind is getting right. My spirit is getting right. My relationship to God is coming back together. I want you to go to that phone and sow that seed. Listen, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank God for this incredible ministry. Thank God for Pastor Benny Hinn. As you sow this seed into this wonderful ministry, you're going to see lives change, and God's going to release financial breakthrough in your life right now in Jesus' name. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you again. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon in Jesus' name. God bless. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth. The gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. Pastor Benny Hinn is passionate about reaching the lost by obeying the mandate for all believers to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm talking about souls. Save my soul. Men and women around the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. Jesus came to give his life for men and women, and for me, and for you, to have the privilege to tell the world, awesome. Pastor Benny Hinn sends regular teaching messages through the mail with rich material which will bless and empower your spiritual life. Many of you are not on our mailing list and you're missing a lot because we send out teachings in the mail in these brochures. Here's one on the anointing. Here's one on the three realms of prayer, beautifully done with pictures and the teaching is all there. Very nice, Paul Crouch told me years ago, he said, I enjoy most your teachings that you send in the mail. How can you get them unless you're on the mailing list? So write me today, Post Office Box 16, 2000 Irving, Texas. A whole lot quicker to just call the number on the screen. It's toll free or go online. Don't miss this opportunity to begin receiving Pastor Benny's regular teaching messages through the mail. Write, call, or request them online today. Join Pastor Benny Hinn in Israel November 1st through the 10th You'll walk where Jesus walked, from Galilee to Jerusalem, and pray in Gethsemane, take communion at the garden tomb, visit the upper room, sail the Sea of Galilee, be baptized in the Jordan River, and much, much more. Visit the ministry website for more information and to download a brochure. Experience Israel with Pastor Benny Hinn. You'll never be the same.